you've decided to cast off the banal shackles of civilian life to become more equal than your fellow citizens by joining the recruitment drive and becoming a Helldiver. Yet, you can't help but feel the five-minute basic training camp may have skipped a step or two in the fine art of becoming an effective negotiator. I don't know where to uh, shoot, shoot, I can't shoot hear it. Shoot, shoot the top bit. So before you're cryogenically frozen and launch the frontiers of the galaxy in a hell pod to spread the good word of democracy and freedom to our alien compatriots, we're going over absolutely everything you need to know about progressing and being the most effective Helldiver possible. At the end, I'll give you my top personal tips to become a high level negotiator at extreme difficulty levels. Helldivers 2 is a third person, mostly, cooperative shooter. In most shooters, cooperating effectively increases your chances of success, but in Helldivers, it's mandatory just to survive. Its mechanics are literally built around working together, because friendly fire is baked into the game, so if your arsenal is not being deployed on the enemy, odds are you're deploying it on yourselves. You guys have got guys on your ass, you six. Yep. Don't. It's a live service game where the accumulation of the entire war effort is reflected on the galaxy map. That is, as you progress to liberate a sector, everybody playing Helldivers in the world enjoys the fruits of your victory, or the sour taste of defeat. It's a mission-based structure, where you choose from a collection of planets along the currently contested sectors to load up and deploy, adding your little bit to the war effort. So from day to day and week to week, the collection of planets and biomes you can select from will change. The difficulty progresses from trivial through to hell dive, spanning a whole nine difficulty levels. Each is unlocked after you finish an operation in the one before, an operation being a grouped collection of missions with progressively increasing rewards. It's from difficulty five and beyond that you get the true hell divers experience. That is, you learn that together you win or divided you fall. Yep. Oh man, got earned. As you increase the difficulty, there will be more mission and environmental modifiers. Modifiers such as your call-ins taking twice as long, or perhaps the brass testing a new experimental weapon you can deploy on the field for free, or even your call-ins getting scrambled. So when you think you're deploying an ammo resupply on your team, you're actually calling down an orbital barrage on your position. Always make sure to check the conditions before deploying so that you don't get blindsided. Which leads us to Stratagems, one of the core building blocks of Helldiver's gameplay. Stratagems are a collection of call-ins you can load out with as you deploy to the planet. They can range from calling down a recallless rifle through to requesting airstrikes or even a handy automated laser drone. This is where the strategic planning element comes into play and you end up with what are effectively builds for different situations. Make sure to coordinate with your fellow Helldivers so that you have a balanced loadout suited to the mission. Stratagems are called in using what I affectionately refer to as Street Fighter combos. We'll grace the skies of this world once more. Each stratagem has its own pattern you have to press while holding down the deploy button, which adds to the hecticness of combat as you desperately try to key in the correct combination while under fire. Arrowhead have been using this mechanic ever since the Magicka games, and it's their unique addition to the genre. Stratagems are unlocked in the ship management section of your orbital super destroyer. At first, you'll only have the machine gun and precision orbital strike, which are more than enough to get you through the first few difficulty levels. As you gain both levels and requisition slips, the game's primary currency, you'll be able to unlock more, finally getting access to all of them at level 20. You earn requisition slips by finishing missions and bonus objectives, as well as finding them at points of interest in-game. So, let me give you this free, handy bonus tip. The auto cannon is amazing for the early to mid game and will make mincemeat out of most objectives and enemies. You're able to use it to fire directly into bug holes and outposts instead of needing to constantly restock on grenades. This makes it easier to blitz through missions and get through both lightly and moderately armored enemies without wasting ammo. While you're at it, get someone in the squad to bring along a disposable anti-tank launcher as well. For those times, the heavily armored enemies pop up in the mid-tier difficulties. It can be recalled every minute or so, meaning it's a great conditional drop to have around so everyone can join in the fun, ripping armor off large units, so they can be more effectively pounded by the autocannons. I don't even oh, I don't know, know what's why. happening, but why I like it. Why is it coming straight to me? 
If you want more tips like this, hit that subscribe button because there are way more where that came from as I'm currently working on a comprehensive advanced tips video to get you mowing through the three hardest difficulties in the game. It's also a great way to support a growing channel and I do appreciate it immensely. In the third section of the ship management menu, you'll find the ship modules, which are permanent passive unlocks that affect all of your stratagems. These are super important to build out in the early game as they will make your endgame experience that much easier. To unlock them, you need to find samples on your missions. Samples come in three varieties, common, rare, and super. Difficulties one to three spawn only the common variety, four to six also spawn the rares, and only seven and beyond spawn the super elusive super samples. Think of this as the game's way of encouraging you to gradually up the ante. Bear in mind, these super samples only spawn in a single location per map, around a very peculiar phallic veiny rock formation, and you will always get three of them per drop. So now you know how to call down stratagems like a pro, but you're still stuck with your crappy ensign machine gun and armor. Enter the acquisition sensor, accessed by pressing R on your destroyer or the corresponding button on the PS5. You'll immediately see the War Bonds section. Think of this as a form of battle pass system where the main tree has all of the weapons, armor, and cosmetic upgrades you have access to using another in game currency, this time being medals. These are earned by completing successful missions and campaigns, as well as found at points of interest in mission. If you've bought the Super Citizen Edition, you will get access to a second premium War Bond tree, which gives you access to items not available to those on the base version. If you've forked out the extra buckaroos, you'll be happy to know that the Incendiary Breaker Shotgun is currently one of the best weapons in the game against the Terminates. And yes, unlike the Premium Edition, that was another free tip, and you're very welcome. Remember, there's plenty more where those came from, so subscribe. Just to the right of the War Bonds is the Superstore, which is where you use the premium or microtransaction currency called Super Credits. The Superstore has a time-limited feature of four different items rotating around every two days. And to the right of this is where things get a little slimier and you're able to use real money to purchase super credits. If that doesn't float your boat, you can also earn super credits as unlocks in the War Bonds trees or find them at points of interest in-game. The size of these drops varies based on RNG. You get to equip all of these acquired goodies in the armory in your super destroyer. You can load out with your favorite primary, secondary, grenade type, armor, and your cape. All the important things. Bear in mind, while the armors all have different stats and modifiers, the helmets and capes presently do not. So if you're going to prioritize anything with your in-game funds, make sure it's the body armor first. The character tab of the armory allows you to customize various superficial elements like body type, voice, emotes, victory poses, as well as your player title and card. While these are purely vanity choices, they do help add a bit of extra personality to the game. As you go into your hell pod to load out, you'll notice that there is an empty slot next to your four stratagem slots designated for boosters. Boosters are items which create modifiers that apply to the entire party. This means you can have four different boosters in effect on any given mission. They can range from making your hell divers more impervious to damage through increasing your radar range and even improving your stamina. Getting these right is a must for an easier time in the higher difficulties. I strongly recommend the Stamina Booster from the regular War Bonds tree, which will help you run and kite more efficiently at higher difficulties where the game gets truly insane. And yes, that was another free tip, so you know what to do. As you work your way through the difficulties, you'll come across an increasing number of effects. These are modifiers which are in action based on the planet, the difficulty, and also due to timed live service events. For instance, for one glorious day, we all got free railgun drops on top of the four other stratagems we dropped in with, which was just eye-wateringly amazing. These effects will have either purely negative, purely positive, or double-edged effects, such as ice planets making laser weapons overheat more slowly, or hot planets not allowing you to run as far. Always check the effects before you drop into the mission, because you don't want to have any accidents when they proc modifiers, such as scattering your airstrikes randomly due to poor visibility. That's called democracy! Oh. Always remember, an informed Helldiver is a Helldiver which marginally exceeds the average operational lifespan of 22 seconds. Next to effects are the orders. 
These are essentially persistent bonus missions. It can be anything from needing to rack up a specific total kill count to broader objectives such as pacifying an entire sector. Remember, Helldivers is a collaborative game and everything is about teamwork, whether it be your four-person squad or the broader offensive you're making with the rest of the Helldivers all over the world. On that note, if you're in the unenviable position of having to play with randoms, there are three different ways you can do it. The galaxy map screen will allow you to see certain ongoing missions in your sector where teams have busted out an SOS beacon. Meanwhile, the quick play button will randomly drop you into a game with three others. Finally, you can simply start a publicly visible game yourself, and the moment you select a mission on the galaxy map, people will begin loading in. The basics are now behind us, and you're still tuned in, so congratulations, you have a higher attention span than 70% of Helldivers. As a credit to your strong character, here is the real good stuff. Advanced tips for higher-end expeditions. The Helldivers 2 combat loop consists of traversing the battlefield while completing objectives and grabbing loot while patrols spawn in around the map. You are better off in almost every case avoiding the enemy patrols whenever you can. You do not get any XP or resources for taking them out, and all they will serve to do is bog you down, unless you can eliminate the patrol quickly. When a bug spooges into the air or an automaton launches a flare, you can bet that reinforcements are inbound. This is where things get real nasty, real fast in higher difficulties. Make sure to keep moving, and if you do experience a breach or reinforcement, bring down overwhelming force on your enemies so that they don't continue in a horrible reinforcement loop. Additionally, with the automatons, you can shoot down the reinforcing ships before they deploy their troops. In the spirit of this style of gameplay, it stands to reason that you'll benefit greatly from light, fast armor. My personal favorite has the 30% extra throwing range modifier so airstrikes can be lobbed further. This can be hugely beneficial if you abuse cluster bombs as much as I do. On that note, if you find yourself often stranded and estranged from your teammates, running the Rover Guard Dog drone can be absolutely quintessential to surviving. Not only does it clear out the smaller ads, giving you an opportunity to call in stratagems and focus on larger enemies, but it generally just increases your overall DPS output. It also has the handy additional benefit of informing you when the game has spawned a new group of enemies directly behind you, and believe me, this will happen way more often than you might like. Just be careful not to get fried by your own turret. It's not very intelligent. Because the drone takes up your backpack slot, it only stands to reason that you'd deploy with a railgun, which is able to take down larger enemies without encumbering you with an ammo pack. This keeps you very light, mobile, and effective on the battlefield. Lastly, I would consider at least one sentry stratagem as mandatory. The Gatling sentry is able to mow down the highest amount of light to mid-armored enemies and create suppression, while the auto cannon and rocket sentries are able to mess up the massive enemies. If you trust your positioning abilities and team communication, the mortars can also be very effective. As the difficulties get higher, you will see an increasing amount of heavily armored and massive enemies spawning in. This means you need heavy ordnance. While a railgun can do great work with some strategically placed leg or headshots, it's still no replacement for a spear or recallless rifle to the face. Designate at least one Helldivers to carry the heavy arms and airstrikes. There's nothing quite like a perfectly dropped 500 kilo bomb one-shotting a bile titan as you salute the sheer power of democracy. That very yes. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Whew, that was a long one. As promised, some juicy tips for higher difficulty expeditions. There are always more where those came from, and because of course you're already subscribed by now, you don't need to worry about missing the future ones, right? See you next time, and happy liberating.